In the heart of the Indonesian archipelago, on the serene island of Sumbawa, the towering peak of Mount Tambora stood as a sentinel, its majestic height often obscured by a veil of clouds. Its lower slopes, rich and fertile, were home to the Tambora tribe, a community deeply rooted in tradition and harmony with nature. They cultivated their lands, fished in the sapphire waters, and reveled in the rhythm of life that had persisted for generations. In this video, we're going to cover the notorious 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora. Beneath this picture of tranquility, the earth whispered of a brewing tempest. The mountain, which had stood silent for centuries, was about to unveil a story of fire and fury. Deep within its bowels, the magma chamber told a tale of tension and turmoil. Over time, the magma had cooled to a near crystalline state, growing increasingly viscous and trapping gas bubbles that yearned to break free. This heightened viscosity was a consequence of the magma's temperature, cooler than what one might expect from such a behemoth. But periodic injections of fresh magma from the depths disturbed this almost solid state and kept it fluidic, ensuing the chamber remained active, teeming with energy and potential. As days turned into nights and seasons ebbed and flowed, the island's inhabitants remained blissfully unaware of the geological drama unfolding beneath their feet. But in 1815, nature's patience wore thin. The pressure within the magma chamber, a ticking time bomb of pent up energy, reached its breaking point. The once majestic Mount Tambora roared to life in a cataclysmic display of power, casting aside its cloak of serenity. The eruption was nothing short of apocalyptic. A colossal plume of ash and smoke ascended into the heavens, blocking out the sun and casting a shadow of uncertainty over the world below. The violent release gave birth to pyroclastic flows, avalanches of scalding gas and rock that consumed everything in its path. The Tambora tribe, the guardians of the mountain, faced the full wrath of this eruption. Their villages, a tapestry of life and culture, were buried in moments, echoing the tragic fate of Pompeii centuries earlier. But Tambora's voice was not confined to Sumbawa. Its echoes reverberated across the globe. The eruption spewed an unimaginable volume of ash and tens of millions of tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. These particles, high in the stratosphere, formed a dark shroud that dimmed the sun's rays, giving birth to the infamous Year Without a Summer in 1816. Across continents, crops withered and temperatures plunged. Economies faltered as grain prices skyrocketed and livestock perished. The world, bound together by this volcanic event, faced food riots, disease outbreaks, and a palpable sense of despair. Yet even in the darkest hours, the indomitable spirit of humanity shone through. Faced with adversity, innovation blossomed. The scarcity of horse fodder birthed the dray scene, a precursor to the modern bicycle. Writers and artists, inspired by the gloomy skies and societal upheavals, birthed timeless masterpieces, with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein standing as a testament to the era's tumultuous emotions. In the aftermath of the eruption, the once verdant island of Sumbawa transformed into a desolate, ashen landscape. The sun's rays struggled to pierce the thick veil of ash, casting a muted, eerie glow over the ruins. The cries of the Tambora tribe, who had once sung songs of harvest and joy, were replaced by a haunting silence, broken only by the occasional whisper of wind carrying tales of a bygone era. Yet, even as the world grappled with the magnitude of the disaster, nature began its slow process of healing and renewal. From the depths of destruction emerged tendrils of hope. The ash, rich in minerals, gradually enriched the soil, and the first signs of green began to pierce the grey blanket. Birds, which had fled the volcanic fury, began their return, their songs heralding a new beginning. The survivors of the Tambora tribe, though scarred by memories of that fateful day, were resilient. They regrouped, sharing stories of survival and loss, and began the arduous task of rebuilding their lives. New villages were established, further from the ominous shadow of Tambora. The tales of the eruption, passed down through oral traditions, served as both a memorial to those who perished and a cautionary tale for future generations. Elsewhere in the world, societies adapted and evolved. The global cooling catalyzed discussions about climate and weather patterns, sparking early interest in meteorology and earth sciences. The challenges of the year without a summer prompted communities to develop better agricultural practices and food storage solutions, laying the groundwork for advancements in agronomy. As decades turned into centuries, the story of Mount Tambora, while fading from immediate memory, found its place in the annals of history and science. Researchers and explorers drawn by the tales of the eruption began to study the mountain, unearthing clues about its past and the forces that had led to the cataclysmic event. 
The excavations around the region revealed remnants of the Tambora tribe civilization, preserved in volcanic ash, offering valuable insights into their way of life. The legacy of the Tambora eruption serves as a testament to the cyclical nature of life, of destruction and creation, of endings and new beginnings. It stands as a humbling reminder of nature's might and the intricate balance that exists between our planet and its inhabitants. And as the modern world faces its own set of challenges, the tales from Tambora echo a timeless message of resilience, adaptation, and the indomitable spirit of humanity in the face of overwhelming odds. Thanks for watching. In the annals of natural history, few events have imprinted themselves upon the collective memory of humanity as indelibly as the catastrophic eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815. This was not a tragedy confined to the realm of fiery mountaintops and ash-covered villages, but a profound disturbance that would ripple through the climatic systems of the world, bringing with it a year of darkness, a year without a summer. As the earth shook and the skies darkened, the magnitude of this volcanic fury was felt not just in the immediate devastation on the Indonesian island of Sumbawa, but also in the far-flung corners of the globe where the sun was obscured and the crops failed. The year 1816 entered history books with a notorious epithet, witnessing a climate anomaly that disrupted the rhythm of the seasons and brought humanity face to face with the fragility of its existence. This was a period marked by agricultural catastrophe, widespread famine, and the stirrings of scientific curiosity, an epoch where the capriciousness of nature's might was met with human despair and resilience in equal measure. From the ashen aftermath of one of the most potent volcanic eruptions recorded, a narrative unfolds. A narrative of a world plunged into a volcanic winter, of societies grappling with the precarity of food security, and of the remarkable human responses to environmental crises. This is a story of how a mountain's wrath reshaped the world, of the lives it touched, and the legacies it forged in its icy embrace. It is a tale woven through with the threads of tragedy and triumph, darkness and enlightenment, and above all, the enduring human spirit's capacity to adapt and to overcome. In this video, we'll continue on from yesterday's episode on the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora, link in the description, and we'll look at the volcanic winter that resulted from it, which produced the 1816 year without a summer. In 1815, the world experienced a natural catastrophe of unprecedented scale when Mount Tambora in the Dutch East Indies erupted with an apocalyptic force. It was a cataclysm that would etch itself into the annals of history, not just for the immediate horror it unleashed, but for the prolonged darkness that followed. The eruption, which occurred on April 10, 1815, was the most powerful in recorded history. The mountain spewed forth an estimated 100 cubic kilometers of debris, ash, and sulfuric acid droplets into the atmosphere. The immediate vicinity was devastated. Pyroclastic flows engulfed the surrounding landscape, and ash blanketed the land, destroying agricultural prospects. Around 10,000 local inhabitants were killed in the immediate aftermath of the eruption, and the island of Sumbawa bore the full brunt of the tragedy, with its communities decimated and its fields rendered barren. But the horror of the eruption was not confined to Sumbawa or even the Dutch East Indies. The true extent of Tambora's wrath would manifest in the following year, 1816 known as the year without a summer. The ash and sulfuric acid that had been injected into the stratosphere encircled the globe, forming an aerosol veil that dimmed the sun's warmth and altered weather patterns. In North America and Europe, the summer of 1816 was marked by cold temperatures and incessant rains, resulting in failed harvests and a subsistence crisis. Snow fell in June, and frost persisted through the summer months, an aberration that left crops withered and the ground barren. In New England, farmers faced the sight of milk freezing in their pails. The Canadian Maritimes experienced heavy frost and ice in the midst of what should have been warm seasons, leading to widespread crop failures. Across the Atlantic, the people of Europe suffered similar fates. Crop failures in Ireland, Wales and England led to what has been called the last great famine of the Western world. Grain prices soared as scarcity gripped the continent. Families found themselves tearing apart their own homes to scavenge for wood to keep warm through the unseasonably cold summer months. The poor, unable to afford the exorbitant prices of grain, resorted to eating nettles and roots to survive. The total number of lives lost as a consequence of the eruption and its aftermath is difficult to ascertain with precision, but it is clear that the indirect effects of the volcanic winter caused by Mount Tambora claim tens of thousands of lives, if not more. 
The famine and disease that followed in its wake, the inevitable attendance to hunger and malnutrition swept across the globe in a grim reaper's dance of death. Yet from this period of darkness there arose beacons of creativity and scientific inquiry. The dreary summer of 1816 confined a group of British writers in a villa by Lake Geneva, where Mary Shelley conceived her novel Frankenstein, a work that reflected the bleak and turbulent mood of the times. Likewise, the climatic anomalies piqued the interest of the scientific community and contributed to the nascent field of climate science. The volcanic winter of Mount Tambora serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance of our climate system and the profound effects that natural events can have on human civilization. It underscores the vulnerability of our societies to the whims of the Earth's geophysical processes and stands as a testament to the resilience and adaptability of humanity in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. Thanks for watching. Nestled in the shadow of the towering Mount Tambora on the island of Sumbawa in Indonesia, the remnants of a once thriving village lay hidden for centuries, covered by the catastrophic volcanic eruption that took place here in 1815. It was one of the most significant volcanic eruptions humanity has witnessed in recorded history, with it being large enough to influence the climate of the entire globe, leading to famines around the world in the preceding years following the eruption due to the volcanic winter it created. We've already created two videos that focus on the Tambora volcanic eruption and the 1816 year without a summer. You can find those in the description below. In this video we'll be discussing the forgotten Tambora tribe. This community lived and prospered until nature's force brought a sudden end to their story. This site, rediscovered much later, came to be known as the Pompeii of Indonesia because like its Italian counterpart, it offers an extraordinary snapshot of life frozen in time halted by a violent volcanic eruption and the accompanying pyroclastic flows that ended this once thriving culture. Though details are scarce, this culture deserved a video focused entirely on them. They were forever lost to history after this event. But as archaeologists dug through the layers of volcanic ash, a picture of the Tambora people's life emerged. The remains of houses, complete with their contents, were unearthed providing a detailed look into the domestic life of the tribe. Pots still containing traces of their last meals, tools used for everyday tasks, and even the imprints of fabric from their clothing were all meticulously preserved by the ash. The magnitude of the Tambor eruption was such that it affected not only the geography but also the demographic and cultural landscape of the region. The tribe, which had cultivated and thrived in the fertile volcanic soils, suddenly vanished in the wake of the eruption. It was in the early 21st century that archaeologists, following the tales and myths woven into local folklore, began to unearth the Tambora site, revealing an exceptionally well-preserved village. As the archaeological team excavated, they found that the volcanic material had created a seal over the village, a natural preservation that captured a moment in time. They discovered that the Tambora people's houses were built sturdily, with a sophistication that indicated an understanding of engineering and architecture. Each home was found with its own hearth, and around it, the everyday life of the Tambora had been petrified. Cooking utensils, furniture and personal belongings lay as if waiting for their owners to return. Only, in most of these houses, the owners lay alongside said belongings. It's difficult to truly understand the chaos that befell this culture in its final moments. They must have been genuinely terrified beyond belief. The sounds of the volcano exploding, volcanic bombs and blocks smashing the ground around you, and this intensity only seems to grow with each passing moment when the look of an ominous dark coloured ground hugging cloud catches your eye as it is expelled from the volcano. It appears to move slowly at first, only for it to build in speed as it edges closer and closer to the village. Once enveloped, the scalding sensation that would have followed as everything suddenly faded to black would have been truly tragic. The final moments of the Tambora culture were forever preserved in the ashfall and pyroclastic material that settled after this tumultuous event finally ended. Further study revealed a complex society that was not only engaged in agriculture but also in animal husbandry. The remains of domesticated animals were discovered alongside their owners, suggesting that livestock played a vital role in Tambora society. Evidence pointed to the fact that they cultivated not just rice but various crops, possibly participating in crop rotation to maintain soil fertility. The Tambora tribe's craftsmanship was evident in the intricacies of their metalwork and pottery. Some metal objects bore intricate designs, perhaps indicative of a cultural or spiritual significance. 
pottery fragments showed that they had mastered both utilitarian and aesthetic aspects of ceramics, with some pieces displaying elaborate patterns and forms. But these domestic items were just the beginning for archaeologists. Fields that once bore rice were now mere outlines in the compacted ash. Still, they told a story of an agrarian society that relied heavily on agriculture. Analysis of these fields indicated that the Tambora people had a well-established farming system, likely the backbone of their economy. As the excavation continued, items indicative of trade such as beads and ceramics not native to Sambawa suggested that the Tambora were not isolated but part of a more extensive network of exchange that spanned the seas. The range of artifacts found indicated that their economy was diverse and connected to the broader economic systems of the Indonesian archipelago. The human remains discovered at the site were the most somber finds. They gave archaeologists a direct connection to the people of the past. Studies of these remains have revealed information about the diet, health, and even the DNA of the Tambora people. They have provided evidence of a genetically diverse population that subsisted on a diet rich in marine life, abundant in the waters surrounding the island. Amazingly, the language of the tribe has been loosely put together, and I thought it was worth it to mention that King Kong was the Tambora's tribe's word for star. Hmm, the more you know. Studies of the human remains and the artifacts found with them have allowed researchers to reconstruct a semblance of the social structure of the Tambora people. From what can be pieced together, it was a society with skilled labour, including metal workers and potters, which indicates a level of social organisation and specialisation. The archaeological site of the Tambora tribe stands today as a stark reminder of the power of nature and its ability to shape and erase human history. The Pompeii of Indonesia has provided historians and archaeologists invaluable insights into the lives of people otherwise lost to history. The site tells a story of a society that was vibrant, resourceful and interconnected, which met an untimely end due to a catastrophic natural event. For modern visitors and scholars, the site is a poignant testament to the resilience and fragility of human societies. The Tambora tribe's rediscovery has filled a gap in our understanding of Indonesia's complex historical tapestry, providing a narrative that connects the past to the present and reminding us of the enduring human spirit in the face of adversity. Thanks for watching.